improving their customers' experience and providing management with metrics through technology to evaluate success. Today, we will be focusing on, like I said, the six strategies for creating a lead management program that provides tactics for increasing your lead bucket, qualifying leads as sales ready, and managing leads within your sales organization. Before I do turn things over to our presenter today, I do want to mention that the webinar is being recorded and it's going to be available on demand after the live session. All attendees will receive an email shortly after the webinar with a link to access the presentation on demand. We encourage you to share that with your team and network as well. To ensure the best audio quality, we have everyone in listen-only mode, but if you have a question, please submit those in the question pane of the GoToWebinar control panel. We have a lot to cover today, so we promise to follow up with afterwards after the webinar in an email to answer any questions that you submit. All right, now time to introduce our presenter today, Jody Gilwright. Jody is a CRM application consultant here at Ledgeview Partners. Jody, it's time to talk about the good stuff everyone's waiting to hear about. It's all yours. All right, thanks, Andy. Um, welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar. I'm excited to address this topic of lead management. I think it's um, something on the mind of most businesses, and certainly if you're joining today, it's um, on your mind as well. So today we're going to focus on six core strategies you know, that are focused on increasing leads for your business and really tactics for managing those leads. And while we'll offer tips for increasing leads, we'll also focus on ways to identify leads and qualify leads so that your sales team can focus their time and energy on the leads that have a higher probability to close, or in other words, leads that are sales ready. And then once a lead is designated as sales ready, we'll look at recommended strategies for managing leads as they move through the buying stages. And while we hear a lot about marketing and sales alignment, I do truly believe that adopting a lead management program within an organization is truly a catalyst for additional collaborative approaches that will lead to increases in sales. So let's get started here. So it really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone anymore, right, that B2C and B2B buyers are conducting massive amounts of online research. Just ask yourself when was the last time you did a Google search regarding a product you were looking for, or maybe answers to an issue you were trying to solve. There is an abundance of information available online for all types of buyers, and this has led to a very empowered consumer who now comes to you educated about your offerings, as well as that of your competitors. So as marketers, as sales professionals, you know, really as businesses, we have to shift our tactics to reach this audience and move from finding leads to getting found by leads, because they truly are seeking you out. The challenge of getting found is, about, is really about rising above the noise of information available, and once found, building a relationship and gaining trust with our leads. And we really need to be focused daily on being there for our buyers in multiple channels. I actually recently heard a statistic that organizations on average need to be engaged in seven different channels in order to reach their customer groups. And despite the quantity, whatever channels you are engaged in should be focused on providing opportunities to convert those seeking information into leads for your organization. The key here, however, is to do this and adapt to the ways that your customers want to interact with you. So really, while your past sales models may have included passing all leads to your sales team whenever someone maybe downloaded a piece of content off of your website or visited your trade show booth, you should take a step back and reevaluate and ask yourself if these leads want to engage with your sales team at this point whether the sales team has had success in converting sales with these leads, and if there's a different way to engage with these leads at the various points of the buyer's journey. Your goal should be to make the most efficient use of your sales team's time by, more importantly, understanding your lead's buying signals and aligning your communication and sales strategy against those triggers. All right, so let's talk in your lead bucket. But before we get into, you know, in, we're going to address that, and then we're going to talk about qualifying and managing leads. 
So the first step in doing this is to really get your marketing and sales teams on the same page. I thought this graphic was kind of funny, but it, it, it truly is a reality in a lot of organizations. So the first step in creating a successful lead generation program for your organization is to really have a solid game plan. And while there may be others on your team that may be needed in developing this plan, the first string players should be members of your sales and your marketing teams. Working together, you will first need to define what a lead looks like for your organization. Ask yourself, who is your ideal customer? Where are they located? What is their job title? What are their wants and their needs? What types of are they trying to solve? Who you, as an organization can you best serve? And today, what type of customer currently converts well for you? This is really a step in identifying your buy, buyer profile. And this is a key step in developing a lead management strategy. You need to know who you want to work with or who is a good fit for your product or service offering. Once that has been established, the next step is to break the definition, the definition down further and look at the behavioral aspects of the lead. Identify what actions a lead may take during the, their awareness, consideration, and finally conversion stage of your sales process. Define what the indicators will be to define when a lead is moving from cold to hot, or in other words, from the research stage to the buying stage. Do they move from cold to hot once they visit a pricing page on your website? Do they move from cold to hot when they open three or more emails from you? What are th those indicators for your organization? And they will be different depending on your buyer profiles. Understanding these buyer journey journeys are really critical because it will define for your organization when your marketing teams will pass a lead to your sales team. Putting all of these pieces together will start to define what the buyer engagement strategy is for your organization. Knowing who your target is, knowing their behaviors, and knowing when and how to engage with them, with them will set both your marketing and sales teams on a well-defined course of action. Whether the marketing team is writing a blog article that is targeted at capturing a certain group of leads, or the sales team is following up on a lead from marketing, your team will be on the same page in how to approach the customer and whose role it is to reach out. Once you know who you want to do business with, the next step is getting found by those targeted leads. Once found, then your job as marketers turn to converting those visitors into leads for your organization. So we're going to talk about creating conversion opportunities. As potential leads search for products and services, they may become aware of your organization via a blog article, maybe a video clip, a display ad online, a webinar, an organic search result, or maybe from an email they receive. The potential entry points are numerous, and thus the challenge to maintain a presence in multiple channels. That is really why point number one is so important. Having a deep understanding of your target audience will help you to focus on where your best lead potential exists. This means that just because there's a lot of hype around having a Facebook page doesn't mean you should have a Facebook page, because if your target is not spending time on that channel, then either should you. However, if you find that, you're use, that you, your, um, your contacts are using LinkedIn to search maybe for educational content around a service you offer, it'd be wise to invest some time and effort around developing that platform. Plain and simple, you want to be where your target is, and the reality is that for today's buyer, that most likely means multiple channels. Not only are buyers of today researching across multiple channels, they are also going to be at various sales, sales stages. Not all leads are ready to buy right away. When looking to capture leads, it's criti critical to keep this in mind, create multiple opportunities to convert at different stages of the buying cycle. The use of CTAs, or calls to action, 
are very powerful in capturing leads. CTAs can be used on your website, your blog articles, maybe even your video content, in an email marketing campaign you're sending out, in a webinar you're hosting, or even on a traditional direct mail piece. The goal of the CTA is to capture information about the visitor, or, or in other words, the lead that you're trying to gain. You should place your CTAs on your most relevant web pages, but you should also include multiple CTAs to reach the different stages that your customer is in. So what do I mean by that? For example, let's say you're a financial planner. A call to action that you might place on your website would be an offer to download a free financial assessment score, score, scorecard to rate, maybe like your financial health. However, you may have an additional call to action on your website to request a one-on-one -on -one assessment with a financial planner for those that are really further down in the sales funnel. Once established, the call to action should link to a landing page that has a form embedded. The form should be designed to capture the most important attributes you need to track about the lead. And remember, especially if you're a marketer, as interested as you will be to collect as much data about the lead as possible, it's important to only collect what is most important. You don't want to scare off the lead by having a lengthy form presented. In fact, if you're using a marketing automation tool, you may also have the option of using progressive profiling, which is where you can ask a different set of questions each time your lead is presented with a form. This will allow you to build your lead profile over time. Just like your CTAs and your landing pages, your offers should also be tailored to the different sales stages a customer may be in. For example, someone who just started their research process may be interested in downloading a white paper on a particular subject of interest. Compared to someone who is in the conversion stage, may be ready to see a demo of your product. You should create offers for each phase and each buyer because they are not only conversion opportunities but also potential indicators of their buying intent. All right, now that we're filling our lead bucket, we're doing all those things we just talked about, what should we do next? Should we send all those leads directly to the sales team for follow-up? Hmm, most likely not. You know, the adoption of marketing automation technology has provided the ability for marketers to now keep the leads, nurture the leads, and qualify the leads before sending them to the sales team. This makes for a happier and more productive sales team as they will be receiving leads from marketing that have a higher probability of closing, thus resulting in a greater conversion rate for them. And naturally, the more qualified leads they receive from marketing, a level of trust is built, and the more likely are they are to follow up on the leads that are passed over. And in fact, this partial view of an infographic from um, a vendor called Inside View highlights the attributes of the leaders and laggards as it relates to marketing and sales alignment and lead management. As you can see here, organizations that focus on lead quality over quantity experience greater successes. And these organizations are maintaining quality, quality over quantity by having a strategic scoring model in place, maintaining a very clean database, and focusing on supporting the sales process beyond just lead acquisition. And that brings up the next tactic, building lead relationships, or in other words, customer engagement. You know, like a new friend that you're getting to know, you will need to also nurture the relationships with those interested in purchasing your product or service. When creating a lead management program, the marketing team will want to help build this relationship before making it, marketing it as a marketing qualified lead and passing it to the sales team. Good news, most marketers are natural relationship builders, so this is where your team can really shine. They can help to provide the lead with information about your product or services using very, various digital channels, including your company website, social media channels, blog, um, email communications, etc. Remember, 
that this is information delivery that is intended to add value. So when doing this, keep the conversation informative and strive to provide content that leads to educated, well-informed buyers, and ideally ones that want to buy your product then. As marketers, your job is to engage with your leads by providing the help that they are seeking. That may mean being available to answer a question that they have on an online chat service you have on your website, or providing a how-to video on servicing your product, or hosting a webinar that educates them on a topic or issue they are concerned with. You need to reach beyond the phone call or email checking to see if they are ready to buy, but rather reach beyond by providing opportunities to engage with you that offers real added value beyond the widget that they're paying for. Remember, while customers have ample amount of information available to them, the volume of that information can be really complex. Be the guide, be the friend that navigates them through those complexities of information. In doing so, you will not only establish a level of trust, but you'll also gain a better understanding of your buyers. And these are just a few examples and some that I just highlighted of ways your marketing team can engage with leads and further qualify the lead before passing the lead to your sales team. Again, just a few ways. There's ample other ways that you can reach out. Just wanted to highlight a few. So identifying good leads from bad leads. One of the core attributes of a quality lead manage pro management program is taking the leads generated and understanding them to determine if they're a good lead or a bad lead. However, this sounds like a dangerous game, right? How am I to know as a marketer if this is a good lead or a bad lead? Who am I to judge if the lead should be qualified or disqualified? Isn't that a sales function, right? Well, this really loops back to one of the first points made about having marketing and sales work together to clearly define the desired attributes of your leads. Let's take a closer look at this. Using marketing automation and CRM technology, instead of having your sales team filter through a large batch of leads to prioritize who to contact, you can leverage your marketing technology to do the work for you. Looking at demographic data, such as location, company size, job title, industry, etc., as well as behavioral data, such as the forms that they submitted from your website, the pages they visited on your site, and also the emails they open, can help to prioritize leads for your sales team. You can continue to collect this information from your leads at different engagement points by leveraging progressive pro profiling as well on your web forms that we talked about earlier. Using, a, using marketing technology, you can score those lead attributes and start to build a scoring profile of your leads. When the lead reaches the predetermined lead score set by your marketing and sales teams, the lead can then automatically be sent to your sales team for follow-up. Remember, the key here is the strategy work you do up front to develop scoring profiles that represent your ideal customer and identify the sales triggers, or in other words, the attributes that should have higher value than others. This infographic provided by Acton Software does a great job of showcasing the results of establishing scoring profiles and how the information can be used to determine a good lead from a bad lead. Just think, if you, if you would have passed the student from Romania to your sales team after he downloaded the white paper from your website, not really a great lead for your sales team to sp be spending their time on, is it? Finally, let's quickly look at the management of leads. Once you have reached a, a level of lead management maturity, your sales team should be experiencing greater successes with the leads that are passed over for follow-up. With a list of qualified leads at their fingertips, what should they do next? Be quick and relevant is kind of the topic we're going to address here at point five. It's very important that when leads are passed to the sales team, the leads are followed up on quickly. According to Harvard, Harvard Business Review, 
Companies that try to contact potential customers within one hour receiving an inquiry are seven times more likely to have a meaningful conversation with a key decision maker. To ensure timely follow-up, leverage your marketing animation and CRM tools to engage sales alerts for hot leads. For example, you may want to trigger a sales alert when a lead exceeds your set lead qualification score by 20 or more points or a sales alert when a certain form on your website is filled out, or even when a certain field is filled out a certain way. While quick follow-up is necessary, the sales team should be reviewing the lead intelligence gathered through the lead qualification process before making contact with the lead. By combining this real-time information with the visitor's entire activity history, a sales rep can quickly and relevantly engage with a potential buyer and hopefully provide the opportunity to reach out before your competition does. Finally, while the lead has been qualified and passed the sales team, there are opportunities for the marketing team to continue to help the sales team. For example, after talking with a customer, you may find out that their decision to move forward with your service has been delayed, or the procurement process for your product has a long decision-making process. Marketing can continue to nurture the lead and score the lead. As the lead score begins to build again, this may be an indicator that they are ready to re-engage again. Keeping the customer engaged during their consideration stage is important rather than leaving that conversation cold for several months. The information that you're feeding them may also play a factor in decreasing the time to make their decision. So the sixth and final area we will discuss is data management. It's important to keep your data clean. To keep lead data clean, remember these points. Integrate data from your marketing automation and CRM data to keep lead and contact data in sync. In addition, the integration will give your sales team exposure to the ways the lead interacted with your company, including their web viewing history, emails they engaged with, forms they submitted, webinars they attended. This type of intelligence will empower your sales team with intelligence that will drive more meaningful conversations. Next, leverage, leverage duplicate detection settings in your CRM system to really minimize duplication. And then encourage your sales team to keep lead records updated in CRM by updating the lead record after each conversation. I know this may seem daunting, so to encourage this updating, make sure you are strategic about the information you really need to collect and make it easy to document in the system for your sales team. So let's summarize the six steps covered today to get you on your way to establishing a lead management plan within your organization. Number one, establish your game plan. Two, create those conversion opportunities. Three, build lead relationships, very key. Then identify those good leads from bad leads to pass them on to the sales team. Once in the sales team's hands, be very quick and relevant in your follow-up. And finally, keep your data clean. So that wraps up today's webinar. I hope you enjoyed the conversation today. And if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them in the question pane and we'll follow up with you after the webinar. I will now turn it back over to Andy to wrap up today's call. All right. Thanks, Jody. Awesome presentation. As a member of the marketing team here myself, it's all about getting those quality leads and managing them to make sure they're followed up on. So that's really great information. Before we go, I just want to remind everyone that you're going to receive a copy of today's on-demand presentation. That will be sometime later this afternoon. And also, we have some more great marketing webinars coming up in July. Um, first is Marketing Automation Boot Camp. It's a series with our partners from Acton. It continues next month. And also, Jody's going to be presenting again uh, five strategies to better segment your current lead database. So keep an eye out for more information on how to register in today's webinar, or email, on demand email, excuse me. Also, you can check any upcoming webinars on our website at ledgerypartners.com and clicking on the news and events circle on that page. So thanks again for joining us today and from all of us at Ledgery Partners, have a great rest of your week.